I'm here in San Antonio for NARIT's Reitwise, our 2019 Law, Accounting, and Finance Conference. Joining me today is Karen Garnett, partner with Proskauer. Karen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Matt. Happy to be here. Now, here at Reitwise, you were on a panel focused on corporate governance. How is the SEC addressing some of the emerging issues in this area? Well, I think corporate governance in general and definitely the proxy process in particular has been an area of focus for the SEC recently. Um, last year, the SEC put together a roundtable discussion, bringing in stakeholders with a variety of perspectives to talk about some of these issues and to address areas where there could be potential for reform. There were three broad topics that they covered at the roundtable. One was proxy process. Some people refer to it as proxy plumbing. One was uh, shareholder proposals and the rules that govern that process. And the third was proxy advisory firms. And that third area certainly has gotten a lot of attention and a lot of press. Um, so uh, a lot of strong views on all sides of that issue. Uh, since the roundtable, the SEC has launched into, I think, a more formal process of trying to consider whether there are areas where the SEC would like to propose changes to its existing rules or perhaps propose new rules. And that process is ongoing. I will say there were a number of really thoughtful comment letters submitted to the SEC in response to the roundtable. So the SEC has already gathered a lot of good public input on these issues, and I think they have a lot of material to work with. The challenge will be to find a path forward because there are so many different views on these, on these issues and some very strong feelings about whether change is appropriate or whether the status quo serves the market the best way. I, I think the SEC will have its work cut out for it in finding a path forward. Now, what are the biggest areas regarding comments from the SEC on REIT filings? So for REITs, I think the number one area has to be non-GAAP financial measures. This is a topic that is very important to REITs because REITs use non-GAAP very frequently to tell their stories because REITs are structured the way they are and they're a little different from operating companies. So non-GAAP measures become very important in their disclosure filings. And I think a lot of investors have come to expect those kinds of disclosures from REITs. So there's a lot of information there and it continues to evolve. The staff, meanwhile, is very interested in maintaining some discipline that's developed around non-GAAP financial measures. And so it will continue to be a focus of, review, of staff review. And I think REITs will continue to see comments in this area. One thing I'll add, kind of an interesting development from last year was the SEC Enforcement Division brought a, a case against a company for its presentation of non-GAAP measures in an earnings release. And that case was interesting because I think it illustrates or it serves as a reminder that the SEC is still very focused in this area and will continue to closely watch what companies are doing. So because REITs use non-GAAP so frequently, it's really an area to stay on top of. And finally, what sort of developments are you seeing regarding ESG and related disclosures? So ESG is a broad topic, obviously, and it means different things to different people people, different companies and different investors approach it differently. But just to generalize, I think companies are providing more ESG related information today than they were historically, you know, going back even five years, I think there's really been a change in the type of information that companies are providing. And that includes REITs as well. I think companies struggle a little bit with understanding what investors are looking for in ESG-related matters, and I think that varies industry to industry. I think there's also a challenge of identifying the best way to convey that information, whether it's in an SEC filing or whether it's in some other communication like a corporate social responsibility report or some other information on a company's website. So there definitely are some challenges in this area and it continues to evolve. In terms of specific disclosures, I think climate change remains very important and probably the most common area of disclosure under the ESG banner that we'll see from companies. 
Um, most companies, including REITs these days, I, I think include a risk factor on climate change. And for some REITs, that's more important than others. If you have a bunch of coastal properties in your portfolio, it's probably going to be a bigger risk to your business than companies that don't have that sort of property. Other areas under ESG, I think corporate governance, the G part of ESG is also an important area of disclosure. So um, in particular, board oversight of risk, that's a requirement under the SEC rules and I think we're seeing some expansion of those disclosures now by companies. Um, things like board oversight of cybersecurity, for instance, has become a big topic for disclosure. Great. Karen, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. For more information on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit Nary's website, REIT.com.